Today we're going to compare a modern, high-end-ish gaming system with Polio to a mid-range system from more than 10 years ago using some pretty powerful horse steroids. In a less stupid way, basically what I'm trying to determine today is how much of a bottleneck is really slow storage. Now the reason that I'm making this video is because a week ago I built kind of a dream mid-range Vista era gaming system. And well, to cut a long story short, the usability on that system was atrocious. Now, in my opinion, the reason that that system was so horrendously unusable was because it had the hard drive equivalent of polio in it, aka SATA 1 generation hard drives. And that immediately made me wonder, would putting a terrible old hard drive in a sexy new gaming system kneecap its day-to-day -day usability enough that it actually is worse than a much older system with an SSD in it? And with that, let's have a look at our two storage test subjects for today's video. Now the SSD is a Samsung 860 EVO. It's a 500 gig version of the drive, and this is pretty much as good as SATA based SSDs are ever gonna get, just because of SATA being a pretty big bottleneck when it comes to SSDs. And then as far as the hard drive goes, we're using this old 120 gig SATA 1 Samsung drive. Now, the keen-eyed of you would have noticed that this isn't the exact same drive that I used in that uh, Windows Vista build. And that's because that hard drive itself was also, it was pretty broken. Uh, so I decided to get a more functioning drive so that it's a more fair test for the old timer. Now this Samsung hard drive is SATA 1 based, which means it's very old and it's probably gonna be very slow. So it's gonna be interesting to see how much it kneecaps the performance of the new system. Now, while talking about the SATA versions of our test subjects today, it's interesting to note that the motherboard in the older system only supports SATA 2, which means that that Samsung 860 EVO drive is actually going to be limited quite severely by the actual SATA interface on the motherboard. But it's still going to be running at about 300 megabits per second, which is still going to be a lot faster than that older drive. But we'll see just at what speeds these drives run at a little bit later. Before we look at the effect that these two drives have on their, on their victims, we need to actually see the specs of the victims in question. Now, as far as the young, new, powerful beast system goes, it has an Intel i7-9700K in it, which is hovering at around 5 gigahertz. Now, the reason that I'm using this CPU for this test, and this may trigger Gary a little bit, Gary. This Intel CPU has actually had the snappiest Windows experience I've had on any of the systems I've used for the last two years or so. As far as RAM goes, we're using a 16 gig kit of DDR4 3600 MHz. It's a Corsair Vengeance RGB kit. Mm. And this RAM kit was actually sent over for this video by Corsair. Now looking at the rest of the specs of the system, uh, we've got an NVIDIA RTX 2060 in there, and then we've got an NZXT N7 Z390 motherboard, which also looks really epic, I really like that motherboard. And then we're cooling the CPU with a Kraken X52 cooler. So it's a pretty awesome system that we're gonna try and kneecap to the best of our abilities. Now moving over to the specs of the older mid-range system, it's got a Core 2 Duo E6300 in it, paired with four gigs of DDR2-800. Uh, so by today's standards, the dual core 1.8 gigahertz Core 2 Duo CPU is, 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 is not all that, but we'll see how much it benefits from actually using an SSD as a boot drive. Now, as far as the graphics card goes, I actually had to swap out the graphics card that was in the previous system. So I'm using a GTX 1050 Ti. This was just purely for easier compatibility with Windows 10. I was having some real problems with the 9600 GT. And then motherboard wise, it's got a Gigabyte EP43. So it's kind of very period specific for about 2008. Oh, and it's also got an awesome Thermaltake SpinQ cooler on it. Now, first things first, I timed how long it took to install Windows 10 on these two PCs off of a bootable flash drive. And as you can see, the brand new PC really won by quite a margin. 
Now, one of the reasons that I think it took so long for the older PC to install Windows 10 is because it took really long to copy the actual install files off of the USB flash drive, uh, whereas with the new system, it happened almost instantly. And I think that had a really big effect on the time difference between the two installs. Now, after I installed Windows on the two systems, I did a very basic setup on the systems. So I just installed graphics card drivers, Google Chrome, and Steam on the two systems. And then I decided to do an actual boot speed test to see how fast it actually takes these PCs to boot up. Now, as you can see from this footage, it's not going very well for the new young athlete. That hard drive is really crippling its performance. And I actually redid this test three times in a row and got the same results every time. So as you can see, that terrible hard drive has a huge effect on the boot times of the new system. And even once it's actually booted into Windows, it takes quite a long time for the system to become usable and actually responsive to inputs. But once the PC's kind of settled into the launch, um, basic things like launching the start bar and right-clicking on the desktop and stuff like that is about comparable to the speed of the older system. So they're kind of trading blow for blow here. In fact, when it comes to day-to-day -day usability, it seems like the systems perform quite similarly. And then just out of interest's sake, when downloading games on Steam onto the boot drives of the two systems, it was quite interesting to see the different metrics for the downloads and how they were interacting with the hard drives. And that brings us to one of the most important tests, is how quickly do games actually load on the two systems? Now, as you can see here, the older system won by quite a long shot. Now for this first test, this was actually the first time that both of these systems loaded into that map for that specific boot cycle. And in that situation, the old PC with the SSD wins by quite a long shot. However, if on the new PC with the hard drive, I actually quit the map and then load back into it, it's way faster than the older PC. And that's something that I noticed. The first time that you do any operation on the Windows desktop, for example, the new system would be significantly slower than the older one. But once you've done it once, then the new system's way faster because then Windows caches that information into the RAM and then it doesn't have to deal with the terrible slow hard drive. So it's nice to see that Windows 10 actually has some pretty good features in place for dealing with really hectic storage-based bottlenecks. Although, once you've actually loaded into the map, obviously the new system absolutely wipes the floor with the older Core 2 Duo-based PC. And then the final objective test that I did between the two systems was Crystal Disk Mark. And as you can see, that Samsung hard drive is, it's very, very slow. And another interesting thing to note is that the SATA 2 interface does actually hold the SSD back quite a bit. Although 300 megabits per second is still pretty good for snappy Windows response and it's way faster than the 30 megabits per second of, of the older hard drive. Now in conclusion, how much of a difference does an older hard drive make to the day-to-day -day usability of a brand new beast gaming system? Now, aside from the boot times kind of being like taking a scalpel to the eyes, um, it's not that bad. Once you've got everything launched and Google Chrome launched, it, it's snappy enough and you don't feel much of a difference between, you know, an SSD based boot drive and this terrible hard drive. And the same goes for game load times. So once the game's loaded once, um, it's not that bad. And then in regards to the day-to-day -day usability of the older system with the SSD, on Windows 10, the PC is surprisingly usable considering how old the hard drive is. When it comes to actual gaming performance, obviously it sucks because, well, the CPU is a huge bottleneck there. But when it comes to like browsing the internet and stuff, the PC is very much usable. So if you have like an e-machine that you use to browse YouTube with or Facebook or whatever, and it's a very old PC, putting an SSD in it is gonna make a big difference to your performance. And then finally, which one would I prefer for day-to-day -day use? So, you know, would I rather have a new PC with a very terrible hard drive in it or an old PC with an SSD? Now, if I did anything other than just browsing the internet, I may actually go with the older system with the SSD in it. But for any other use case, yeah, obviously the new system is way better. Things take longer to use and the system is a bit more frustrating, but it's still a really awesome PC. 
And with that, thank you very much for watching one of the more pointless videos I've done in a while. Um, yeah, if you like this video, subscribe to the channel for more videos like this one. Follow me on whatever social media you like. I have them all linked in the description below. I'll be streaming later today, so check that out as well in the description. And yeah, until the next video, bye-bye.